Hello darkness, my old friend. My project failed on me again. <laughs> I need something fun to do. Basically just a little basin here with three blocks in it and our workpiece goes right on top and then we just want to make sure this whole thing's level, which it's not. Let's see if we can't fix that. Um, okay, better. Why is all this stuff cluttered around my shop? It's my own fault because I can't seem to put stuff back where it belongs. Last time we used white as a base, and this time we're going to try with black. I'm using a flat black spray paint. And I'm also going to spray paint the edges ahead of time. Makes life a lot easier near the end of the project. Uh, we'll let that dry, we'll do one more coat, and then all the prep work is done, and we can get on to the fun part. And I like to give the resin a little warm water bath before we get started. It um, helps it flow a little better, it makes it easier to work with. Okay, um, we've got quite a few pigment selections now. Between my casting craft, the pigments that I got from Ian Thomas, and the new batch that I just got sent out from the Just Resin channel, I think we are good with dyes and pigments for a while. I really want to try this metallic, so we're going to start with a metallic blue, and then I want some bright colors uh, like we did with the butterflies. What I want are really bright colors, because the base is black, and so it really needs to offset that. I think these three will be the ones that I picked today. Uh, metallic blue, fluorescent orange, and fluorescent pink. I'm also going to pick this and we'll see how that turns out later. For the primary color I think I'm going to use blue and I'm going to mix up six ounces of that. That's three ounces of hardener and three ounces of resin. Uh, as for the other two colors I don't think we'll need more than four ounces. I think this is going to work. Those are really bright. The pink and the, the uh, orange are very bright colors. All right, so let's add the resin. And we got to stir them all again thoroughly. One of the major benefits of this resin is that it has 45 minutes of open time, which should give us more than enough time for our painting. And you can see the surface isn't perfect, it's still a little patchy, but I don't think that matters considering that we're going to be dumping resin on it. This is going to be the major color here. I'm going to try to just spread it around. I want this color to dominate our painting. And next, let's go with a splash of orange. Mix those two together a little bit. And then we're going to hit this corner over here with our pink. And a line of pink 
to you there. We're just kind of making crazy decisions. Heat gun. So the heat gun warms up the resin and kind of lets us play with it a little bit. And we're just going to swirl it around. We got chunks of something in there. Did that come off the heat gun? Or did the heat gun cause that? Didn't give me trouble last time. There's definitely chunks of something in there. I don't know what that is. All right. We don't need the heat gun. Let's try just swirling it. We're in charge, we can do whatever we want. Do we like that? Oh, I'm pulling up the black paint is what I'm doing. Interesting, okay, I don't think I wanna do that anymore. All right, so my heat gun started making white chunks appear and then my stir sticks started scraping up black paint. So I'm gonna try blowing on it through a couple of straws. Really? Yeah, okay, that works. More pink. And more blue. All right, who's who feels like passing out? Is that just is that just me? And I'm out of blue. All right. Depending on how hard you blow through the straws, you can get a really vicious ripple or something much more calm. It's actually, I think I prefer this to the heat gun. I feel like you get a lot more control with it. I like this better than the heat gun. I, yeah, skip the heat gun. Get a couple of straws. It's pretty cool looking actually. Um, it does have some bubbles on it. And so let's see if we can't pop some of those. can overdo this, so don't. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. And we've got some scratches over here, but I mean, it, it kind of just is. I can't fix it, and it's space, so we'll just call it hardest space, I guess. It has been 24 hours. It is dry to the touch. It'd probably still leave fingerprints if I pushed my thumb into it. It'll take a couple of days to fully cure and harden. Actually came out really cool. Huge fan of the blue metallic. It's got this great shimmer effect to it. It definitely has what I was looking for, which is sort of a nebula look to it. A little disappointed by the scratches, but you know, it's not the end of the world. It led us to a really valuable solution, which was the straws. We'll definitely be using the straws in the future. I am very, very happy with that. But let me show you something even cooler. Remember in the faux stained glass video when I broke out the black light? There's a reason I used those pigments in this project. And I added a UV tracer to the blue metallic dye. In the daylight version, you can't see the same swirls as you can in the black light version. It's Oh my gosh, there's a man in my painting. Oh, he's even, got a, he's even got an air bubble right by the eyeball. Hello. 
All right, we'll leave you alone. So there you go. Looks good in daylight and in the black light. It is a dual purpose resin painting. There's something about this process that is just really cathartic and I'm ready to tackle something else. And I wanna thank you all very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. No point in hanging around, nothing to do but frown. Another project failure always gets me down. <laughs>